I'm touched how wonderful it is to be here. I need to uh, make a couple of corrections. That must be a very old um, uh, description of my uh, background because I have 20 grandchildren, not 13. So it uh, <laughs> shows you how old uh, that, that, that uh, backgrounder is. So anyway, it's, uh, but it's wonderful to be here. What a wonderful university you have. Um, my daughter, uh, Suzanne Susie, when you stand. Susie is uh, from um, Roanoke, or Troutville, I guess. She, she would prefer to uh, be known. Uh, and so she's uh, now a Virginian, as you, as you would. Um, sorry to have lost her from California. Is anybody from California here? Okay, well, there's a few of you. Well, you can imagine how sad it was for me to lose my, uh, my daughter to Virginia. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting is that my family, uh, uh, my original, uh, my ancestors came from Virginia back in the early 1700s. They founded Roanoke. The Persingers and the Reeds were the main families of, of Roanoke. And, and there's a little grave site in, uh, in Roanoke that has some of my ancestors, direct ancestors buried there that... Uh, we were recognized actually in the Roanoke Times on July uh, of this year. Uh, so it's uh, interesting to, 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 in fact, they, did, they, said, they said there's probably no relatives, anybody from this, uh, for, from this family in, in the area. And of course, that really made my daughter upset because here she is, lives right in Roanoke. And they uh, didn't uh, know that there was a family here that was from that, those, those, uh, those ancestors. So it's, uh, Really, um, I guess my roots are here, and, and I was up in Boston two days ago, uh, or three, if I lost time here. I've been on an airplane every day for three days, so uh, I guess it was Wednesday, I was, in, I was in Boston, and we have a lot of relatives that, or ancestors that came over on the Mayflower in the early days of this country. So my, my roots in the, in, in the United States of America go very deep and, and very long, and so I have a very proud... Uh, uh, family history that I'm very excited about. Um, my wife Delana, Delana, you want to stand? This is the, the the grandmother of the of the 20 grandchildren. <laughs> We've been married for over 50 years, and you can see that we were very child sweethearts, obviously, because we don't look that old. Uh, <laughs> and I have two grandchildren with me. Josh, you want to stand? Josh is 14. He went to EFY here this year, and he was very excited about that experience. And then Grace. Grace is seven. Grace wants to grow up and be a beauty queen, she tells me. Uh, so anyway, uh, but it's really exciting to, to be here and to see this wonderful university you have. I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, when um, Rodney Smith and, and Richard Whitehead visited me many years ago and asked me to come, I, I kind of nodded my head, oh, well, yeah, some, who knows, you know, you're not exactly on the way to Dairy Queen. And uh, so uh, uh, would I ever be able to, to come? But they are very persistent, and I, I guess they must have prayed me here because I, I came, and, and I'm, I'm delighted to, to be here. Uh, my wife and I actually live... Uh, no longer in, in the San Jose area. We actually live in an area called Atherton. We're very close to Stanford University. Um, uh, and we, we both serve as ordinance workers in the Oakland Temple uh, on Wednesday mid-shift. So uh, we, we love, uh, love that calling. There's no greater calling in the church, I don't think, than to serve in, in the temple. Because there you really find a different feeling and a different view of, um, of what uh, the purpose of life really is when you, when you go to the temple. Uh, if you look around in the temple, with all those great people, they're going to be your neighbors in the celestial kingdom. And, and so if you want to know your neighbors, go to the temple because they're, they're, there's where your neighbors are. Uh, and, uh, and, and they're wonderful, just wonderful people. Um, as we uh, uh, were discussing my coming, uh, they asked me what opening song I wanted, and, and I said, I don't know for sure. I mean, something that goes along with my talk, uh, and, and, but I was very busy and trying to get some other things squared away. I said, well, you, you pick a song. And then when I uh, uh, disconnected and started reflecting, I said, well, I hope they do uh, put your shoulder to the wheel. And uh, 
So that's the song that you, you came up with. So uh, that's, that's, that's really great. Um, uh, I'm the oldest of 11 children. Uh, I was born and raised in, in the Imperial Valley in Southern California, which is down in the desert. Uh, we weren't, uh, didn't have a, a, a ward or stake. In those days, it was a branch of the church. Actually, we're part of the San Diego uh, mission. Uh, and uh, so there weren't very many, many members of the church when I grew up. And, but I grew up in a very strong LDS home, and I can remember it, we lived in a, this little street, uh, Olive Avenue, and, and um, being the oldest, I was asked to, to do a lot of the chores, and I can remember um, out there, very, very hot in Imperial Valley. It gets, you know, for, for those of you who are from Phoenix, I know how hot it's in Phoenix. Well, it's hotter in El Centro. You know, El Centro, by the way, is, is the only place when people go to hell, they take a blanket. So uh, it, 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 it's pretty, pretty warm. Um, and so uh, uh, I, I, I'd be asked to, 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 to mow the yard. And, and uh, I remember, you know, sitting down and, and trying to stay in the shade. And, and my mother would come out, and, and, and by the way, all the neighbors would hear her. She'd say, Ray, put your shoulder to the wheel. Push along, you know. And, uh, and I'd grumble and get up on a lawnmower because the push mowers in those days, we didn't have the power mowers. And so and I'd, I'd push that lawnmower. And so I, I, I really didn't like that song, Put Your Shoulder to the Wheel, because it was one that my mother used to, 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 to harangue me about. Uh, Any time she wanted me to do something, she'd tell me to put my, put my shoulder to the wheel. Um, but that stuck with me, and um, you know, being the oldest of eleven, and 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 um, having the experience of, of being involved with uh, that many siblings, uh, you know, I learned a discipline. And uh, my mother is from a German ancestry, and and um, uh, and she became, she became a very disciplined person. She was a school teacher up until she was seventy-five when she had to retire. Um, and so she was very dedicated and very focused. You have to be disciplined if you're going to be the um, <clears throat> have 11 children. Um, uh, I was uh, uh, three days in childbirth. I was breech and 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 I was came out and rear first. And, uh, and but my mother never gave up. She didn't want to go have a C-section. She wanted uh, to be a natural childbirth and. And uh, so you can imagine, uh, if, if I'm in the birth canal for three days, um, what that was like for me. I came out bent. It took over a day for me to straighten out. Uh, <clears throat> and, uh, but my mother was determined. She was a very determined person. And, and, uh, and, and I thought, well, gee whiz, after that experience, why did she want any more children? Uh, but she, she ended up having 10 more. Uh, my, I can only remember my mother pregnant. I remember her not pregnant. Uh, so long as I can remember as a child anyway. Uh, but um, she was very dedicated to the church and very focused. And discipline was, uh, was, was at the heart of, of, um, of her um, life. And you know, uh, so as I thought about what I might talk about with you uh, today, um, The thing that came to mind that I think is extremely important for all of us, and, and uh, hopefully you'll get the sense of I met my message. By the way, we have a handout at the end of uh, my forum, and, and you'll be able to get a copy of it. So if, if you aren't able to take notes or don't seem to need of it, uh, don't worry about it. We do have a handout anyway. But um, um, <clears throat> nothing in life worth having comes free. You know, we're going to. You go through this entire life focusing on, 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 on accomplishing, and and to be successful, you really need to to do whatever it takes, no excuses, because discipline really becomes how we survive not only um, uh, on this earth but also in the church. Um, so, <clears throat> so it's not it's not that we just try to do better, but that we consistently work at, at, at becoming a better person. Because you're not going to succeed if you just try. Um, uh, I can remember reading uh, Jimmy Carter's uh, book uh, when he was attending Annapolis, uh, and he interviewed with, in, uh, with Admiral Rickover. And at the, um, in the senior year, of course, Rickover, Admiral Rickover would interview all the students uh, individually, and he was interviewing Jimmy Carter. Um, and um, and so 
Ed Merkel was sitting in his office facing the wall and uh, he could hear Ensign Carter come come into the door and, uh, and, and he said, uh, Ensign Carter reporting, sir. And then uh, Ed Merkel was, uh, said, while you were at the academy, how do you think you did? And uh, uh, Jimmy Carter said, well, I think I did pretty good. And then um, uh, Ed Merkel got up and got about two inches from um, uh, President Carter's nose and said, if not your best, why not? Um, and, and so that's really the, the, the key is, is if, if you're not going to do your best, why not? <clears throat> so continuous improvement is important and I'm not going to minimize the, 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 um, the, um, the, the, um, the importance of, um, of continuous improvement, but if you just improve and not do your best, you're not going to accomplish what you want to in your career because, you know, it's not just sufficient to just get better. You know, be, there's always somebody, and you know, in, in your school, uh, you know, you're graded uh, based on how well you perform against your other students. And uh, there's always somebody else out there trying to do better also. And so if you're going to win the race, you know, you have to strive for first place. Coming in second is being in second place, and that is, of course, not sufficient. So um, um, discipline can be defined as doing what we do not like doing and doing it well. So why is that so important? Why is uh, doing what we don't like doing important? Because it's generally those things which we don't like doing that get procrastinated. In the book of Ether, in the 12th chapter, I think I have that right. No, in the yeah, 12th chapter, 27th verse, um, the, the, the Lord told uh, told us that uh, if we come unto him and we want to become humble, that he will show us our weaknesses. And through our weaknesses that we can become strong. Now, a weakness um, uh, in, in this respect refers more to adversity. And so he's going to give us trials and adversity to strengthen us. And as you recall,